Hello everyone, how you guys doing? Hopefully you guys are having a wonderful day and today we are here with a Cerberus guide for Old School RuneScape. Personally, I have done a good bit of Cerberus both on this account and my other one. I absolutely love it because it's a boss that doesn't always provide consistent profit, rather a lot of the profits in the Primordial Crystals, so it's kind of a game of chance. Definitely a big fan of Cerberus and if you guys are a fan of this guide, make sure to like and subscribe, it would help me out a ton. But with that said, let's go ahead and get into the guide. So we'll start with the requirements. As far as what you need, 91 Slayer is a requirement, but you can boost from 86 with a Wild Pie. So you can technically kill it earlier. 86 kind of is annoying to boost at because you have to boost every single minute. Um, realistically, I'd recommend like 87, 88, just so it's not that annoying. But if you do get a Hellhound's task, you can do this earlier. 80s in your attack, defense, and strength would be pretty nice. Defense is nice here because you eat a ton of food and strength and attack are just important everywhere for DPS. Cerberus doesn't have that high of defense though, so I'm sure you could do it with a little less, but most people by this point of Slayer I'd imagine have these stats. And 70 prayer is almost a requirement. I mean, piety is super important at this point of the game. And uh, prayer is also very important here because you'll be getting it drained. So you'll need to be able to kind of heal more from your prayer pods. That'd be helpful. So 70 prayer is required as well. And then finally, 65 to 80 agility would be extremely helpful because in the Taverly dungeon, if we zoom in on kind of the main entryway, there is a 70 agility shortcut, an 80 agility shortcut on the west, and then to the northeast, that's kind of the route you'd have to take to go around and through it all. And you can save yourself over a minute and 20 seconds, you know, cutting your runtime down 60% if you have 80 agility. Here you can also plus 5 boost with a summer pie, so it could be 75 agility to use the best route, or 65 agility to use the secondary route, which isn't that much slower. And by this point of the game, you should have graceful, so your agility level should be pretty high. So I, I think these are doable, and you know, that 80 agility shortcut is a nice little goal long term. So as far as what to expect from Cerberus, the weakness that Cerberus has is Crush and a Twisted Bow. Some uh, monsters in game get absolutely destroyed by a Twisted Bow, and this is one of them. The max hit of Cerberus is a 23, but the Ghost can hit a 30 plus if you don't pray the correct prayer, so they only can hit 30. The reason I say 30 plus is because a lot of times you'll be hit by a lot of stuff at once, so 30 isn't where I would stay at. And then as far as Cerberus attack styles, as you can see, quite a lot of them, uh, melee, mage, range, and then the ghosts that kind of drain your prayer as well. It's not too hard once you get used to it, so don't worry, but you are going to be attacked by almost everything. And then as far as what to expect from Cerberus drop-wise, uh, most people will be looking for the crystals that are a 1 in 5, 12 chance each. Uh, so it's a 1 in 128 chance of hitting the table for any of the four. Um, and the Primordial is the main one. The other ones are pretty cheap, the Pagasian being a mil, and the other two being near to 2 mil. There's also a lot of elite clues here at 1 in 100, and the pet chance is 1 in 3k. Your kills per hour probably will lie between 25 and 50. Uh, there may be some outliers, but that's where most people will be, and GP per hour will range from 1.8 to 3.2 mil uh, per hour. The reason that it's not 3.6 and it's not like doubled is because if you're using the higher method, you'll be using a lot of blood runes, so that cuts into your profit. And then finally, before we get into like, you know, what to wear, how to kill it, whatnots, as far as the rates that you can expect, this is Slayer XP per hour. It's pretty decent. If you have a Scythe, it's 34, a Bludgeon is 27, and at a lower level with a Hosta, it's 18. Don't worry too much about these setups because we'll talk more about them, but you can see it's still decent Slayer XP for a boss task. And if you want the combat XP per hour for any of these, just take the number and multiply it times four. So finally, should you kill them? I believe so. It's great money. It's dependent on RNG. Some people will like that and some won't. Personally, that kind of keeps me, uh, you know, just keep killing because it could be the next one, you know, you never know. So I enjoy it. Uh, also great XP. So I'm a big fan of Cerberus. In terms of what you're going to wear here is kind of just more of a broken down picture of the three setups that I was showing before. Um, in the top right, it talks about how the Spectral Spirit Shield is useful for this task. It is very useful because it will uh, mitigate the prayer potions that you'll have to drink, making you uh, last longer on your trips. So it's very nice if you can afford it, obviously pretty expensive. Um, but the gear setups, starting on the left, basically a Zamorakian Haas is about the worst thing I'd come here with. There are alternatives, but... 
I mean, at this point of Slayer, I, I just assume most people have a Hasta. A Cudgel is also an alternative. Um, and then for the Middle Gear setup, I do have a Bludgeon setup with Bandos and all that, and then a Hasta and a Spectral Spirit Shield to switch to whenever the Ghosts come out. Um, with the lower setup, since you don't have a Spectral, you'll just be using more prayer points, but that's fine. It'll still be okay. And then there's kind of a big upgrade to the best setup. Um, one of the intermediate steps that you could take is by adding a rapier to the bludgeon setup beforehand. That would work fine too. That's kind of the upgrade weapon between bludgeon and uh, inquisitor's mace. But on the far right, that setup is insanely expensive. I was really excited to use it and it was really good, but it is not cheap by any means. So gonna cost a lot to be able to get the best kills per hour here um, for melee special attacks this is kind of just up to you dragon claws are better dps than a dragon dagger and those are the two that i would go with or if you feel like you you know you just need more hp and more prayer on your trips and you're just running low on supplies quick maybe switch to an sgs but that's up to you there's really no definite answer most people are going to want dragon claws if they can though so then in terms of the range gear, you can just kind of look at it here. I have a uh, blowpipe set up on the left-hand side that's kind of made for maybe people that just don't have their, you know, uh, melees up enough. I guess that would be the reason you would switch to this. It's not ideal. You're spending more GP per hour with a blowpipe than you need to, and you're already going to be taking just a lot of, you know, damage from prayer and just health, and I'm not a big fan of it, but if you want to, that is a setup that you can use here. And the Tebow side of it is, again, very expensive but very very good here so if you want to go into that feel free most people i'd recommend melee but if you have a tebow or you just have really high range then these are alternatives as well so now it's time to talk about the inventory and how to get there so as far as how you're going to want to get there it's in the taverly dungeon like i said earlier so we'll just be teleporting to falador and running over this wall up to there um, the inventory is a little complicated here because it's scented so far away from a bank. Some people prefer the suicide method, which I do a lot. What you're going to need for that is a looting bag. You can either attain a looting bag through the Grand Exchange by buying it and using the bank note on a banker, or you can find yourself up to Edgeville, and there you can purchase it through the Bounty Hunter shop. Either way, what you're going to want to do is fill up your inventory a lot with restores, Sarah brews, boosting potions, and food, and then just fill up your inventory, fill up your looting bag in the wilderness, which you'll have to walk to level one wilderness to do, so don't bring anything expensive on you. And then you can also skull from the bounty hunter guy to be able to drop a little bit more whenever you go to Cerberus. From there, you're just going to want to make your way there. I'll talk more about that, but once you get to Cerberus, you just die, and then you have essentially two inventories of loot on the ground. Personally, I start off every session of Cerberus with two of these deaths, leaving me four inventories of loot on the ground, and then I have this inventory here. Balancing your food and your restores is just something that is personal for everyone. If you're really, really good at avoiding damage, then you're going to need more restores. If you're not, then you're going to need more food. That is just something that is different for everyone. Personally, I bring about six to seven restores per inventory, and the rest I just kind of fill up with food, Ceridome and brews, and combat potions if you're bringing a range setup do much the same just switch out divine super combats with ranging potions i usually drink a stam sip before i head on out there and uh, also angler up while i'm at the bank just a little added on thing that i do if you're bringing the range setup you probably just want to opt for a blowpipe as your special attack if you're using the tebow setup because the blowpipe is nice for that kind of uh, healing effect from the special attack and like I said, you just make your way on over to the ladder over here, and that will be the Taverly Dungeon. And then from there, you have your different options. If you have to run all the way around, you just run up through here, and you keep on going. I'm imagining by this point of Slayer, you know how to get through there. It's not very fun. If you have 75 agility, you can go that way. If you have 80, you can go this way. I didn't bring a Summer Pie because I, I'm not used to being on this account. Usually, I'm on my account that has 99 agility. So I guess I'm going the long way. The downside of going this longer way is I just got attacked by that blue dragon. You might take some damage from there. There's also black demons and there's a little spider that can poison you. So I guess there's more downsides than just how long it takes you, which is why I really do recommend that little shortcut if you can get your agility up enough. So run by these hellhounds and you'll find your way on over to this cave. And then from there, it'll kind of branch off into three different parts that all have a Cerberus inside. You can choose whichever way you want. Typically, I'm just kind of a West guy, so I'm going to go on over there. 
So now that we're in the Cerberus layer, we can take a look at kind of the wiki layout of its attack styles. There are three attacks on here. The first one is a combo. The combo attack starts with a mage-based attack, which you are always praying. Once you see the attack come out, then you switch to range quick and melee quick, and you will block all three if you time it properly. The ghost attack only happens if he's under 400 HP, and that attack is when three ghosts kind of come down the river and they're arranged in a particular order. The red one is melee, you have to pray melee, and as soon as you see your prayer go down, switch to the next one, which is either going to be range or mage. The green one is range, and the blue one is mage, so you just have to remember the order, and they go from west to east, so the west one will be the first. Also, both special attacks are indicated by a text chat through Cerberus. He'll either Aru if he is calling out Ghost, or he will Gur if he is just throwing fire. And then the final attack is Lava, which is where Cerberus just throws out Lava at you and you have to just move. That's simply it. If you stand on top of it, it'll deal more damage. If you're next to it, it's a little less, but it will hurt quite a lot. So you just want to run away from there and you'll be fine. And that's all of Cerberus's attacks. There's only really three other than his regular attacks, so there's not too much to worry about. Personally, I don't worry about the combo one that much because if you protect from every combo that ever happens to you, you'll probably outlast your, your two inventories on the ground. So personally, I don't. I think that protecting from the first one on every kill is probably a good way to go. Beyond that, I would just rather focus on ghosts or lava, that way I don't die, rather than worry about saving a piece of food here and there. So I'm going to pot up and we're going to go in and just kind of show what all this is about. So off that quick pass, I'm going to go in and I'm praying mage, like you see. As soon as I see that, I switch to range and melee and boom, kind of just protected from all of them right there. Now we have a nice little bit to go until we hit the ghost, and I'm going to switch on over to my scythe. You should only switch to the spectral uh, if, if you don't have it on all the time. You should only switch to it when the ghosts are coming out. Um, another point, you would like to keep your prayer points ideally between 30 and 45 when the ghosts come out. That's the most effective range. Right now I'm just going to have to sip up because that's the way it is. Um, it starts with mage or range and then goes to mage and then melee and you just want to switch as soon as you see your prayer points go down because that means the last attack has gone through and you don't have to worry about it anymore. Once it gets below 200 then you have to worry about the lava so we're basically at that point right now and you know I'll just keep an eye out. There's been a couple combos during this entire like attack cycle, but as you've seen, I haven't taken too much damage, so that's why I don't really mind too much. Uh, again, right here, I just dodge the lava, switch prayers according to the ghost, and switch my shield on, and that was as simple as a kill gets. Now, it's a lot easier when you have a scythe, I guess, than if you have a regular uh, bludgeon or hosta, but honestly, Cerberus's defense is really low, that's why the XP rates here are really good just for a uh, monster that you have to melee and that you get decent profit from. So I think a lot of people can do it. I think it's definitely um, a good task as long as you're just willing to pay attention and kind of pick up on the, the couple special attacks that happen. It's really not that big of a deal. And as you can see here, I I've used uh, a food or two and a kill and a half. And so that's just kind of how it is. Now here, like, it is tough if you don't have a spectral because these spirits will be taking out 60 to 90 uh, prayer points instead of the, the 30 to 45 that they would normally take out. It's going to be a little tough for people that are earlier in the game, but at the end of the day, that's why you have the death piles. I didn't bring any this time around because I'm just staying here for the example kills, but it really is that simple. You don't have to worry about it too much at all. As long as you can recognize what the ghosts are and what order they're coming in, then other than that, it's just running around and avoiding lava and just breaking in profit whenever you get that prim drop. And if you're ranging, it's much the same, just, you know, standing at a distance. There's not too much to be worried about. And again, your main focus is going to be on ghost or lava. And if you want to protect against combos, again, feel free to open up that chart and take a look. It's a bit overkill for me, but I know some people are into that type of stuff. So I also think with death mechanics now, it's probably a lot more penalizing if you're just going to overly focus here. So I would just, you know, stick to what really needs to be focused on. That's going to be it for me today. Hopefully you guys did enjoy the guide. If you did, make sure to leave a like. Let me know any guides you want to see in the future down below. And on top of that, if you guys want to see more videos like this as soon as they go live, make sure to subscribe. And with that said, hopefully you guys have a wonderful day and uh, peace.